if you fall to your death, you'll see his head open with blood coming out. Like I said, very violent, very gory. You can also be chopped in half by this utterly nightmare-inducing trap that consists of two sharp metal halves chopping down every so often. You can't turn those off. You have to jump through them. And if not, you'll see yourself there in two halves with blood from your wounds on the floor and the edges of the chomper. Now every level consists of a number of solitary screens. And basically if you move out of one screen you'll get into another and the direction you were moving will determine from where you enter the next screen. If you jump down at the bottom of one screen, you'll come in from the top of the next screen. The game essentially only has two different areas. You have the very clearly prison areas with the very dark and gray tiles and backgrounds. And then you have the more palatial areas with golden walls and tiles. Both of them have lit torches with fairly nicely done... I mean, not necessarily convincing, but they convey the idea that there's a flame burning there. It's not just flashing, they actually studied how fire moves. The Prince himself also has very realistic animation. I believe this was actually a case of rotoscoping where Jordan Mechner had his brother act out moves for the prince to do. To get through the levels, you have to navigate throughout these many platforms, jumping up several levels, climbing down several levels, finding an opening onto the next area, and then getting there. Also, I mentioned that Jafar threatened the princess that she would die in an hour if she didn't marry him. There actually is a one hour time limit on this game. Once you've gotten to the third level, you can save your progress. Though only ever at the start of the level. With, I think, one or two exceptions. The gameplay is addictive and it's a lot of fun. But admittedly, there is not a lot of replayability. It's like Heart of Darkness. Basically, once you know what to do, there really isn't a lot else you can do. And this also only has one difficulty setting. I've personally replayed it just to have the experience again and to enjoy the crap out of that fighting system again. But I suppose not everyone will want to. There is no scoring system, there are no points to earn, but it's a great challenge and a really noteworthy game. The level of detail on these games is also amazing. The graphics are as you would expect from a game from 1989. It looks nice enough, and I do personally think it's a lot like the original Wolfenstein 3D. I haven't, I haven't confirmed this, but my theory is they realized what the limitations of the graphics were instead of pretending they could do something they couldn't. You know, I mean, I'm not hating on Mario, but in the first games we were basically supposed to buy that more or less one color and, you know, the occasional cloud constituted a sky, an open sky. In these two games they realized that they did not have a lot of color, there was a limit to how much detail they could put into it, so they said, okay, we'll put it underground. Wolfenstein 3D, on account of all these narrow, long, closed hallways, very claustrophobic, and because most rooms look the same, you have to seriously work to remember where you came from, where you're going. Now in this, the areas do look different enough. You won't go to an area and think, hey, wasn't I just there? But the areas, especially the prison ones, do tend to be very dark. The Prince is wearing only a long white piece of cloth. It might be sort of sewn to him because there are pants to it and such, 
and the guards basically all wear the same uniform, only with, you know, the color palette changed to create some... It works, you know, it convinces you that you are trapped in this dungeon, in this very hostile environment, and you are that much more determined to get out of there. I wholeheartedly recommend it to anyone, especially retro gamers. You will need DOSBox to run it, but that's it. And, of course, you know, a computer that can actually run older games and DOSBox. Moving on to Prince of Persia 2, The Shadow and the Flame. Things have been going well since the prince managed to slay the vizier and marry the princess. However, one day, something strange happens. The prince is approaching the court, and a strange chill hits him. He further approaches his wife and father-in-law, and he feels them staring at him, as if they don't know him. He asks the princess why she's looking at him so strangely. Suddenly, another prince comes from behind the princess and angrily states, How dare you speak to the princess? Guards, seize him. The princess insists that it's just a poor mad beggar, but nonetheless, the guards pursue you. You realize, of course, that your doppelganger is in fact Jafar. However, for the time being, you have to save your life before you can figure out what's going on. You run towards a window and jump. And this is where the game gives you control of the prince. You literally have to turn around and start fighting your opponent in about a second, maybe two, or you will die immediately. You fight off a couple of guards, make your way across some rooftops through the city, fighting more guards, and finally, I guess, waiting until the heat is off, I'm not sure, the prince jumps onto a ship as a blind passenger. Not entirely sure why he doesn't stay in Persia and, you know, hide out. Return to the palace as soon as he can. Not sure. Anyway, he does board this ship. Jafar uses his magic powers to create a storm. We get an overlay of his face onto the clouds to make sure that we know it's him. And the prince then finds himself on an apparently deserted island. As you can probably already tell, this one takes you to numerous new locations. The graphics had improved, and they could pull them off pretty nicely. The city itself in Persia looks great. Most of the locations do, and there are several quite memorable ones. You make your way through an ancient cave, visit a lost civilization or two, you go around the world of ancient Persia, really, in 90 minutes. I'm not sure they thought this through. Anyway, for some reason, whenever you move from one overall location to the next, even if you're flying to get there, you don't return to Persia itself until the very end. I would think that would be at the very top of the prince's to-do list, but I don't know. Maybe people had other worries back then. The many locations still bear enough of a resemblance to the setup of the prison. You're still moving from screen to screen, climbing up several levels of platforms, dodging traps, and fighting some enemies. There are more enemies and more fights in this one than in the first game. In fact, there's almost as many fights in the first level of this game as there is in about the first half of the first game. There are several new traps. The spikes return, but they now don't come up from the ground, they come out from the side. This also begins the trend of traps that don't kill you, something that the new trilogy continues. Fortunately, that really isn't a cop-out. There's really only one type of trap in this that doesn't immediately kill you, and that's these little automated guns, projectile weapons anyway, where if you move on to a pressure plate, it will fire off a projectile, and that'll take off one of your health bottles. 
And do keep in mind, you start out with only three.